Right, Pastor Jonathan. Yeah, we're live. All right. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. While waiting for everybody, kumusta po kayo dyan? We're back for our second session, second day for our calculus topic given to you by Dr. Henry Molintas from Maryland. <clears throat> Hi, Mom Stacy, Mom Laika. Sir Mark, Kevin, Sir Rico, good morning. Let's wait for the others to come in. Yeah, medyo nag-setup lang po tayo ng uh, ating <clears throat> live. How's everyone doing today? Musta po kayo? <clears throat> Good morning, Mom Bubbles. <clears throat> Kumusta po? May natutunan po ba kahapon? Kita namin yung mga <laughs> evaluation but we can again move on. Yeah. Excited to learn and yeah, Sister Mark, thank you for that. Today we're gonna be discussing about integral calculus. Ano po ba yan? Nakakain po ba? <laughs> o kahit na math majors po tayo, no? even though we already have learned math. Parang math is a continuous learning. Especially, it's very interesting to know the practical applications. Our speaker today is well experienced, ano ho? well versed in the applications of uh, the integral calculus. He's a designer of systems, both for commercial and military <laughs> applications. So we're excited to do that. We're still 11 who are already here. Yeah, welcome po sa ating uh, second day. So our topic for today is this one. <clears throat> mm. 
Maybe we can go ahead with the prayer before we will uh, go formally with the discussions with Dr. Henry today. So please join us as we sing this song. I believe uh, you're uh, familiar with this song. Lead me, Lord, lead me by the light, the rising sun, and meet you all the things I do. With no other hand, we may. Thank you. 
Ayan. Amen. <laughs> yes. So, I, I hope everyone is feeling okay that everyone is still, you know, have that peace, experiencing that peace from the Lord. Uh, knowing that our life is not actually just here on earth. <laughs> we have to look forward. I don't know if you have heard about the announcement of the president last night. Kagabi sabi niya, kahit wala nang aral-aral, yung mga bata, laro-laro la lang muna. <laughs> ano po? And uh, what can you say about that, mga dear teachers? <laughs> but life moves on, hindi po ba? And that is why we need to prepare ourselves. No matter what may happen, life moves on. And here is an alternative that we can do, online teaching and distance learning. Ano po. So... Are you all ready now to listen to Dr. Henry? As we will discuss, he will discuss to us about the practical applications of integral calculus. Yesterday we had the differential calculus. Perhaps you can share your thoughts, share your questions. If ever you have something that's not clear to you, uh, I believe he's very much willing to, to uh, answer that. So, Doc Henry, are we ready? Yeah, uh, I'm wondering, can I share my screen? Uh, it's up there. I can control it from here. Oh, you can control it? Okay. Okay. So, I'll let you start now. Thank sure. you. Good morning there in the Philippines. And uh, good evening here in the United States. Um, today we will go over uh, part two of our talk today. Uh, it's about understanding calculus and its applications. And we are zeroing in on the integral calculus aspect. Uh, yesterday we did the differential calculus, which is basically a, a very first stage in calculus. It's actually, it deals with rates and slopes and and uh, finite elements. Uh, today we will go zero in and the federal calculus and how we can um, manipulate these differential differential uh, calculus equations, manipulate them and integrate them so that uh, we can use it for other means of uh, quantifying uh, things. So we'll go over uh, some of these. Uh, Topic and this is the outline here. What is the integral calculus? I'll, I'll show you that. And why do we need to learn it? We'll go over some applications, uh, especially the volume aspect, the area how we calculate those for specific functions. We will uh, skip break right now. Uh, I will show you that on another topic, maybe the next one after this. Uh, we will zero in. Somebody mentioned about statistics. Uh, we're going to use some um, uh, root mean square uh, because this is highly using the statistics and also averages. And then uh, going into uh, uh, that, they into a new topic called the work or the work due to compression. How do you you calculate within that? Is there a problem within that? So anyway, uh, yeah, those are these are the outlines. And I'll uh, go over it uh, to all of you today. Thank you. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, well, what is calculus, integral calculus, IC? Okay, well, as the name implies, it's, uh, it's uh, used to integrate, combine infinitesimal data, okay, of a specific functions to describe some displacement area volume or other concepts you want to describe. It could be work, it could be torque, it could be uh, any uh, scientific phenomena in the uh, mechanics uh, mechanic subject, okay? Like differential calculus, it is also uh, um, 
It is. Uh, it, it was discovered by Newton and Leibniz in the late 17th century, and this is an example of uh, of a system. Uh, uh, it's like uh, it, you, we have to make sure that we are following some basic assumptions here, and it has to be this f of x will be continuous. Again, uh, if I will substitute x to uh, a to x, uh, that should exist, and so it be, and uh, the limit of this uh, function exists also uh, from x equals to a to x equals to b. Otherwise, we have a discontinuity and the calculus will not work that way. Well. So I want to make sure it's continuous. But uh, of course, there are discontinuous functions as well. Um, we can tackle those for some other time uh, because they, are, they, are all, they also exist in, in, the, in the mathematical world. All right, uh, going into uh, slide four. Uh, Looking at the next slide here, um, which is slide four. Um, let's go to the next slide, uh, Pastor uh, Jonathan. All right, this is uh, basically uh, another another description, uh, more clear description about what is this uh, integral calculus. It's basically a inverse operation of differential calculus. Okay, when you differentiate it, you integrate it. Stuff like that um, to, to get some value. In this case, uh, the differential is like uh, uh, differential area here. Basically, it's the differential area. So, if we want to calculate an, uh, an area that bounded by this curve with the x axis from x is equal to a to x is equal to b, uh, we will start with an elemental area, differential area, dA, okay? That's a differential area, dA. And uh, that, uh, and we know the definition of area by, from geometry, based on height. So basically, the base is basically your dx, and your base and your height is equal to x of y. So we determine the area now bounded by this uh, curve in the x axis. We can write our uh, integral, integral uh, calculus equation as a equals the integral of x is equal to x equal to a to x equal to b. Of f of x dx, and then plugging in the, the values in here, you know, you have this, and the word for x and y are variable. Okay, going into the next slide. Um, in like manner, in the next slide, you can also calculate the area bounded by this curve with the y axis in this case, from y equals to c to y equals to b. Let me say basically the same concept. I just want to show you that yeah, you can if you can solve the area bounded by the curve with the x-axis, you can also just do it bounded by by the, the y-axis with the curve. Okay. So uh, so that's uh, sometimes we miss that, but I'd like to show you that also. Okay, now moving into the next slide, which is uh, slide six. Um what does this uh, integral calculus provide us? Well, it provides us uh, the ability to sum up uh, systematically this uh, the billions of uh, rectangles, millions of them, infinite with infinitesimal widths. Of uh, in this case, uh, not the one that's actually the the x should be should be the x, not the one. Okay, so the cycle running from between x equal to a to x equal to b. And if x, the x approaches zero, which is uh, it's very near zero, but not really exactly equal to zero, and we can write a differential area for for this one. Uh, dA equals the function of x dx, when uh, you're based on height, basically based on height uh, definition. And then then you you have uh, you have this. So basically the same thing as I did. Uh, what but what if this function is not is very irregular, but we can uh, approximate it at the curve. And maybe it's not very regular. Well, you can, uh, there are many ways how you, you can do it. It could be you can use uh, written the second bullet in here that I written. There are two ways how you can prove the accuracy of the integration. First, you can use a trapezoidal rule for the elements. Instead of using a rectangular, which in this case we are using rectangular because now we are using 
we're assuming that the base is the x and the height is y. Actually, actually, if you look at it, if you if you put a magnifying glass on that uh, on the top of that uh, uh, right at the curve itself, you will see that it, it approximates a a um, a line. So you can actually use these particular elements also to increase the accuracy. The other way to increase accuracy is you increase the number of this precise area. In this case, we have ten areas here. A1, A2, and so forth, going to A10. But if you want to increase the uh, accuracy, then you can increase it, you can even increase it, only even maybe a thousand, maybe a million. But uh, we have to be careful because we might pack, overpack our computers. Uh, if you don't have a high performance computing system, we will not be able to do it. Uh, we will have some limitation. We, we will trust our computers. So, uh, so that if we will not trust our computers, we can only. Uh, assign some, some elements in here. That is only if this is not well defined. Okay, but if it's defined, then you can use the federal couple correctly. What I'm just describing is the numerical method for how you integrate this. If it were just an experiment from data that uh, you just uh, um, came up with, but it doesn't, uh, doesn't fit well a function like, uh, like, like this fit, uh, f of x, then that's one way to numerically integrate it instead of using um, bigger calculus that way. Okay, going to slide seven. Uh, why do we study integral calculus? Well, uh, well, the, as, uh, as you know, it's already uh, based on the previous example, is used to evaluate differential equations and also partial differential equations. Differential equations are uh, mostly two dimensional. The partial differential equations are mostly three dimensional. Why do we have to deal three dimensional? Well, we live in a three dimensional world, uh, unfortunately. That's why but sometimes they are more complex than two dimensions. We use two dimensional for simplifying things and trying to analyze like, and making compar comparative analysis of what we are getting from our experiment. But uh, for greater accuracy, we will have to resort to a three-dimensional uh, uh, formulation. In this case, uh, using partial differential equations. Uh, what, how do we use the uh, how do you use integral calculus? Well, you can use it in many uh, in many ways. to have a widespread application. In this case, one example is this uh, navigation, the type of navigation system, particle accelerator lasers, uh, prediction of rapid trajectories, as well as the orbit of satellites. In space, and uh, interestingly, you can also use to understand the origin of the universe, um, how it came about. Of course, that's a bad uh, domain, but uh, sometimes uh, that has enabled us to understand something a little bit about what he had created, the beauty of his creation. Amen. So. Uh, one other application that is very prevalent and very useful uh, to in our world today is the prediction of tornadoes and hurricanes and cyclones in the Philippines. Where is, is it going to be headed? You know, and how fast is the cycle? And uh, how many, what's the signal? What are the, what are the category is it? Is it signal number one, two, or three? Okay. So you use this uh, uh, to predict and to uh, not only to predict, but to uh, to actually uh, uh, predict the trajectory so that uh, you can uh, save thousands of uh, lives and also millions and millions of uh, dollars or pesos. And of course, it has a lot of business applications to personal production. <coughs> okay, moving on to the next slide, um, which is now uh, let's go to let's go, uh, let's go over some, some concrete examples we can. We can, uh, we can, instead of looking at it but from an abstract point of view, let's look at it from a concrete point of view. In this case, I have an example here for a building uh, an area bounded by, uh, by a line with, uh, with this uh, parabolic curve. Okay, this parabolic curve is f of x equals to y equals to x squared in this case. It's a level. So the differential area, we go back to the differential area. Uh, the integral of that will be the integral of uh, from 0 to 4 of y dx, and it's equal to the integral of y 0 to 4 to x squared dx. I want to make sure they are on the same, they are the same uh, variable here. We're not using y or x 
but have to have to be mixing apples and apples or oranges or oranges. In this case, we are dealing with X only. So we will look look into X. So in this case, we integrate that and then we have X squared dx and then we have X two over three. But we have to apply the limit because this is a definite integral. Uh, it's not indefinite. So now you, you can use uh, you can substitute this now in place of x or in place of x in zero in place of x so we get 50 to over three. Okay, hopefully uh, that's just straightforward. Now this is another example on the, on the next slide, uh, slide nine. This is another interesting example, uh, which is about uh, a revolution. In this case, uh, if you look at the same example that I shown earlier, if I'm going to revolve this element about the x axis, we generate a differential volume. Okay, and that differential volume has a volume, and you can calculate that on pi y squared dx. Okay, pi y squared is the area of the base, and dx is the distance of the, the, the height. In this case, dx, because I'm going to revolve that, you also have you also have you, you have a kind of disk. Uh, this uh, shape in this case. Okay. So uh, if I will plug in these values into my integral equation, then uh, I will have an integral from 0 to 4 pi 1 4 times x squared dx. Manipulating that further, like what we had done uh, earlier, I will factor out pi over 4 because pi over 4 is constant, so I have to take it out. To the left side, put it back on the left side of the integral sign, and then uh, I will substitute the value for 4 and 0 to x after I make that integration, and then I get uh, 16 pi over 3. Okay, so 64 divided by 4 is 16, 4 divided by 4 is 3. All right, hopefully that's a straightforward. This is for uh, looking at the volume of this. Uh, this, this curve right here when we look uh revolve it around the x axis. Okay, now uh the next sample here is the uh, root mean square. Okay. This is uh something that uh had attracted me when I was uh young engineering students in the classroom. Our electrical engineering professor showed us this one and uh and then what is this root mean mean square? Uh, well it's uh, one way of understanding the uh it's actually used for calculating the power. The energy from a uh, sinusoidal voltage because see we are not using direct current we are using alternating current right and the alternate just like uh, we we have here okay so if I have a voltage as a function of time uh, I can express it like this uh, it's equal to the V max which is the, the peak of that sinusoidal curve and that the equation in this curve right here follows a fine a trigonometric function, which is is fine multiplied by the bracket with by t, which is two units of time, all over t, which is the is the given. T here is actually two pi, okay, which is uh, you know uh, which is which is a constant, okay. So for that one one cycle, uh, t is equal to big capital letter t. Okay. Now if I apply my root mean square now. So what I'll do is I do the root, so that I, that's why I have this, uh, this square of point. And then this one over T, okay, represents the, uh, the, the average value. Okay, represents the average value. Now I will do the square. That's why I have the square, V max square. So I'll put, uh, I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna square this voltage equation. Uh, so I get this uh, for the voltage equation. Uh, since this is a um, uh, challenging to manipulate, we have a identity, trigonometric identity, what we're familiar with. Those of you who have uh, studied trigonometric uh, identities, you can you, you know that uh, time squared theta is equal to one minus cosine two theta over two. In this case, theta is equal to two pi small capital small t over capital t. Okay, so that's basically that is okay. Now, if we manipulate this uh, interesting, if we manipulate this uh, RMS, this Rootman V sub RMS, which is Rootman square, if we manipulate that, go to the next slide, we have this, uh, we have this uh, equation right here. And um, go to the next slide, Jonathan. Yeah, there it is. Um, 
you, you see it, it you, know, you have this one now. I, I plugged in the, the cosine, cosine of times one month to cosine of two theta. In this case, I will uh, replace the theta with two times uh, two pi t small capital small t over capital T, and then d t is the differential a differential value in this case t, which is fine. Now, so I will continue to manipulate this one here. The, integra the integration of one is basically t. That's what we get on the big bracket on the left. But this one is uh, fine between zero to capital T. And then uh, negative cosine will be, if I integrate negative to rent, it's going to be negative sine for T over T. All right. And then if I will continue to substitute that, I find out that the sine of four, uh, four, four, four pi capital T is zero, basically, because if you look at the trigonometry, this is just actually a rotation four times. 180 degrees four times around here. Uh, two pi actually it's twice. It's uh, twice of two pi. So that's basically uh this one is zero. So the sine of zero is uh, you know the special triangle. You see that on that uh, thing. And then on the next curve, the next curve you see that uh T T will cancel and then we got the iron as well, which is E max square root two over 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 two. That is after I rationalize the the equation on the above above this answer here. Okay. And then if I will look at the average, which is very common in uh in statistics, uh okay, so for the average uh, value of the voltage, I will get uh, one over two, which is the the, the base basically of that curve of the sinusoidal curve, curve and then I will integrate one to two. Now we'll integrate the whole thing and I come up with a value equal to zero. Okay, it is a bit tough as well. If you look at, if you go back to slide, slide um, 10, the sinusoidal curve, you see it will cancel. That area, the positive area and the negative area, you know, they have the same magnitude, so they cancel together. That's why your average voltage is zero. Okay, that's for an alternating current. Okay, uh, so that's the application in the electrical engineering world. Now let's look at the last one. Uh, it's, uh, let's look at another example on the next slide. In this case, a, uh, it's about a, uh, it's very common for reciprocating compressors. Now, if I have a piston uh, that is that's been swept a distance of A, okay, and then uh, this volume, this is, a, this is a pressure volume curve, right? And then I know the equation of this pressure volume, which is called EV for equal C, right? Where C is basically constant. All right, then the work will be simply the integral of 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 uh, because I'm integrating it with respect to the P axis here. Okay. I can also integrate it with respect to the to the to the, to the uh, V axis, but it's more complicated if you do it that way. You will have if you are uh, taking a examination, it will take you probably an hour to do that. But if you use what I use in here using the P axis, yeah, you know, it will uh, it will it will shorten the time. You need to come up with an answer. You know, all this more simple problem. And for sometimes you have to use your imagination. Okay, so this is how you solve the area of this uh, of this compression. Okay, so if you have compressed a, a gas of air, for example, from state A to state B, okay, with pressure equal to P A and P B. With volume equal to VA and uh, uh, VB. Yes, uh, you can use this for high school also. I think high school should try it, uh, high school should, just, uh, should start being familiar with this one so that you will see how these applications are, how you can use this, up, how you can apply them already in your, uh, in your, when you're doing research as a high schooler, I mean, you can use this when you're using it, uh, let's say, if you have an internal combustion engine, you can use this equation. Or maybe if you come up with a something, a compressed air, like, like if you want to start a compressed air inside your bike and you use that compressed air to power up your bike. Um, because maybe some of the bikes you can, if you're going downhill, you can use the gravitational energy to, uh, to generate that pressure for you. 
and then uh, when you are uh, in a uh, level ground or maybe you go up, you can uh, activate this compressor to uh, help power up your uh, bicycle. You can use this, uh, you can use this knob, you can use this principle actually. Uh, on the last slide, slide 14, um, this is a continuation of uh, slide 13 basically, and this is the work. And uh, in this case, C is constant. Okay. Go to the next slide. Uh, button, you know, okay. Next one. There we go. And this is how you do it. You manipulate that. And it's, which is basically the integral of dt over p, which is c equal to c times the low, low, natural logarithm of p. So the natural logarithm of p, p is the variable that has a value between p a to p a, p b. So I'm going to plug both in into that, and then I get uh, the value of work. In this case, if you are in the English system, it's six pounds, but if you are uh, in the metric system, it's in joules or newton meter. Okay. So basically, that's the end of this presentation. Um, it's, um, it, um, what I'd like to do with the presentation is I'd like to capture some of the applications so that it's more, you know, we have a, a better flavor and perspective about what this integral calculus is, and what do you mean, and how do you use it. Uh, so these are some of the examples um, on how to use it. There are, of course, broader applications also, uh, like how you predict tornado, for example, like uh -huh. but this. Uh, All right, this is, is, is that it? Is that it? <laughs> wow, mukhang bitin bitin. It's simple. Hi, mga kaguro, kumusta po kayo? Are you able to? Uh, get something today. <laughs> Marami mga ano, no? comments. So talagang okay pa po ba? Hindi pa dinudugong mga ilong natin. Ano? <laughs> uh, sabi nila, uh, nakaka-reminis daw ng mga college days. Ano? <laughs> so ano pa po yung mga nakita ko dyan? Uh, Run X na mukhang matatapos <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nako, ending na yon ano Ma'am Kimberly. <laughs> so, how is it? Uh, kumusta po yung ating pag-aaral ngayon? Of course, I believe may not may po tayong na pulot at uh, isa lamang po ito sa mga napapag-aralan natin. <laughs> at uh, well, let's let's move on with uh, with our topics ano ho. Uh, if you have then, sabi ni Ma'am Gab, more, more formulas pa daw. <laughs> ano, gusto mo, more formulas pa ang iba to, ang makuha natin, or something. More practical applications. <laughs> ang dami, ano, ng application pala niyan. Very, really practical, ano, if we have uh, to review. But anyways, ganyan po talaga, ano, ang integral calculus. Napakarami ang pwedeng magamit ano especially on forecasting especially on predicting and so what else uh, morning yes mamilita okay and we'll see uh isa got nga <laughs> so that's it dr henry thank you so much for your time so, maraming requests na po pwede pa po bang some other topics later on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can uh, yung iba, uh, breakout, o kaya uh, we can do statistics, right? Yeah, so, you know, we can look at the statistics, how you use calculus to statistics. Mm -hmm. Because abangan nyo po, ang ATM is conceptualizing series of webinars for everyone. And that will be posted very soon let's say five weeks, six weeks po, tuloy-tuloy, almost every day, may time program for everybody to uh, watch and join. Habang walang pasok po, ang uh, Brigade Escuela will start in August, bago po is uh, pag-aaral natin, open night class. So we are our, actually, last last night, medyo ano po, no? Ayan, no? may nag, may nag may nag-sell <laughs> yeah. 
So, ang announcement, tutuloy bang klase? Ano sa palagay ninyo? Yan. Eh, kay Ma'am Kimberly, sabi niya, mahirap po yun ang calculus <laughs> sa statistics. Ganun po ba? Are you thinking... We'll see. Uh, sabi nga nila, eh, walang mahirap sa mga talagang uh, disidido, no? To learn. Ano po? Gaano mong kahirap, then abutin natin. Well, thank you so much for your time. Yes, welcome. Thank you. Then, uh, we'll again. Let's keep in touch. Away. Yeah, you take care. Okay. Thank you. God yes. bless. Yes. And uh, uh, can you send me the YouTube channel? Oh yeah. All okay. right. Thank you. Okay. Everyone, counting five, four, three, two, one. God bless us all. God bless. Good night. Good night.